Hey everyone, I have a question that I really, really want to know the answer to. So I want to see if someone can give me an answer. Now, I know there's going to be somebody who will give me the most simplest answer. And I'm sure there's people that think they know everything. But I really want an in-depth answer. So my question is about Adam and Eve. I'm such a, a thinker. I'm always thinking about things. And I just want to know if God never intended for Adam and Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, then why was it in the garden? Why? In Genesis. Yo, what's good? Your boy Sam Noble. And, uh, I'm going to try to answer this question for her real quick. You know, first, I want to give a disclaimer. There's certain things that I teach as doctrine. And then there's certain things that I'm studying and, you know, been looking into for years and, you know, still receiving revelation and things on. So this is one of those things. Right. But let's jump right into it. So the question is, why is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden in the first place? If God did not want for them to eat from it. Now, when she posed the question, she said, if God didn't intend for them to eat from it. I don't know if that's necessarily the right words to use because we know that the Bible says that Christ was slain from the foundations of the earth. So that means that God knew of our fall and our redemption and had a plan for it from the very beginning. You know what I mean? Before anything ever took place. So it's not that this was something that, that kind of took the most high off guard. But I think we need to get more clarity into what it is we're talking about in the first place. Right. So what exactly are we referring to when we're talking about trees in the garden? And that's something that we need to understand. So I'm going to try to get into it real quick and break it down. You know what I'm saying? We on TikTok and they don't give us too many minutes. So walk with me. I can't give you all of the scriptures and everything, but I can give you a solid foundation to give you something to go back and study and look into. Walk with me. So we're talking about the garden of Eden, the trees in the garden. Why was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in there in the first place? I think one thing that we need to know is what are the trees referring to, right? So we can get some signs and some clues throughout the other scriptures. The Bible says there's no private interpretation of scripture. That means you can't go and try to figure it out. You got to get it from within the scriptures. If we look at Mark 8 and 22 and 26, you remember that story where they brought the blind man to Christ and the blind man was brought to Christ and Christ spit in his hands and he touched his eyes and he, you know what I'm saying? He, he healed the man, brought his vision back, right? But before he brought his vision back completely clear, he saw uh, something and Christ asked him what it is that you see he said I can see but I see trees I see people I see men as trees you understand what I'm saying so that was something that he was doing Christ actually opened his eyes up to the spirit realm and then it says he touched his eyes again and then he saw clearly regularly how we see today but what he saw something in the spirit he saw people as trees now that's something significant that story is very significant right and so then you start to realize, okay we see people as trees walking what's the significance of that then you start to realize the bible actually does kind of speak about trees as people it's not like it's some new concept or something like that you know what i'm saying we just never really paid much attention to it psalms 1 and 1 through 6 says that uh he who delights in the law of the lord and meditates on his word day and night he will be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water and will bring forth its fruit in due season so the Lord is telling us to be like a tree if we continue to take in his word, if we continue to consume his word, right? So we will be like a tree. People are his trees. Matthew 7, 8 and 19, you know this one. It says what? That every tree that bears good fruit, right, is what the Lord is looking for. But those who bear not good fruit will be cut down and cast into the fire. So are you either a tree that's bearing good fruit or you a tree that's bearing bad fruit? Stay with me, y'all, because we're we going somewhere. Tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? So every tree that bears not good fruit is cut down. And every tree, you know, that bears good fruit, the Lord will prune it and it will bring forth more fruit. But let's go here. So we might, we, we can see, okay, people being looked at as trees in the Bible. Okay, that's something to think about. But you maybe not have took that and brought it over to Genesis with you to understand it because you're not allowing the Bible to interpret itself. Genesis 2 and 16. So we do have an issue before we even get there. The Bible told us that God made everything good in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. So if God made everything good, that means that everything in the garden was good, even the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
Well, what? But it's something that could bring them death, bro. So how in the world is it something that's good? You feel what I'm saying? So that's what we got to answer. Because God said he made everything good in Genesis 1 and 31. And then we get to Genesis 2, 16 and 17. He said, okay, you can eat from every tree that's in the garden. You know what I'm saying? But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat from that one. That's the only one I don't want you to eat from. So what exactly could it be? If we thinking about the Bible, speaking about people as trees and different things of that nature, right? You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, we got to ask ourselves, who else was in the garden with Adam and Eve? Was it other people in the garden? You know what I mean? So, I mean, well, from the scripture, we know from Genesis 3 and 8 that the Lord was in the garden with them, right? We know that. It says that the Lord would come walking and meet with them in the cool of the day. You understand what I'm saying? So we know the Lord was in the garden with them. Anybody else we could see from scripture that was in the garden? We go to Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 through 16, and it begins to talk about who? It talks about Lucifer. It talks about him as an anointed cherub that covers it talks about him as the seal of perfection, being blameless, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. And then what? Until iniquity was found in him. So guess what? If these trees are people, if they are talking about people and referring to people, this tree that was in the garden, it was good. Everything God created was good. God created Lucifer to be good as well. You understand what I'm saying? But what happened? Until iniquity was found in him. You understand what I'm saying? Well, how, how did iniquity get found in him? We can look at Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. And it tells you that he got lifted up with pride. You know what I'm saying? Started to fill himself. All of those different things, right? What he do? Now he turned around and he started to say, he started to believe that he could be God himself. You understand what I'm saying? So Lucifer, believing that himself can be God, he lead, he begins to take into this ideology, this mentality, and he begins to lead a revolt and a rebellion against the Most High God, teaching people that they can be their own gods. You feel me? That's something, that's one of the biggest things that's out here right now today. This is what they run around telling people. This is what Satan did. In the in the in the um, um, in the kingdom and revolt against the Most High, he went around with the uh, teaching that they can be their own gods. You understand what I'm saying? Therefore, making him become the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Why is that? Because to eat the forbidden fruit is simply just to consume his words, to consume his doctrine, his speech. The fruit is spoken word. You understand what I'm saying? How do I know that? You, you like, you, you kind of, man, I don't know if you're making things up. Let's look at Genesis 3, verses 9 through 11. What did the Most High say after they ate from the tree? You know, Adam and Eve, they was hiding and stuff. The Lord, like, where are you? You know what I mean? Adam, like, um, you know, I was hiding because I, I heard you coming and I hid myself in the midst of the garden, you know, because I was naked. And then what did the Lord say to him? He said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree that I commanded you not to? So notice, it's synonymous. Who told you it's synonymous with eating of the tree? You understand? So so, so God is asking him, who told you that? Have you been talking to that tree that I told you not to? Have you been getting things that I told you not to? So, so what you got to understand is this. Satan, was, Satan is a corrupt tree in the garden. He's a garden that the Most High did not, he's the tree that the Most High did not want them to eat from. They didn't want, he didn't want them to consume the fruit of his words. You understand what I'm saying? And so he was in the garden because he was created to be good. He was created, you know what I'm saying, to serve the Most High, to be a covering sheriff, right? But he decided to get full of himself, and then that's when he became a tree that was to not be eaten from. You understand what I'm saying? And the Bible tells you these type of things all of, all of the time when it comes to the fruit being the word. A lot of times we think about fruit, we start to think of the fruits of the spirit, this, that, and the other. And, but it's actions and it's, it's just words as well. Words are fruit as well. We know that from Proverbs 18 and 21. He said that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. Life and death in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat of its fruit. If you eat of it, you shall surely die. Life and death in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 12 and 14. A righteous man be satisfied with the good of the fruit of his mouth. Proverbs 11 and 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Right? He that wins souls is wise. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Why is that? Because it's talking about the words of the righteous. That's why it says he that wins souls is wise. 
because the words of the righteous, they like a tree of life. You understand what I'm saying? So the tree of life is what? We know where do we get life from? From the spirit of God, the spirit of God. John 6 and 63, Christ said, these words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So we know the tree of life represents the spirit of the most high God. All right. That's something that you have to understand. So just trying to give this to you real quick. You know what I'm saying? Try to run through it. But the tree of life is representative of God. It's representative of his spirit. It's representative of his word. You understand? We consume it. We become a part of that tree. You understand? We we are grafted into that tree. The tree lives in us and is with us. You understand what I'm saying? All we have to do is consume the word of the most high. And then we become branches. That's why Christ said he was divine. We are the branches. Is it making some sense to you? So that's what it, that's exactly what's going on here right now, right? So then, that's what it represents is represented by the tree of life. It's the Most High, it's His Spirit. The tree of evil, or the knowledge of good and evil, is representative of Satan. It's representative of Lucifer, who was a good tree that was planted in the garden. You know what I'm saying? And he had to work there as a servant for the Most High, but he became a corrupt tree. It's a disease tree. It's a poisonous tree. You understand? And if you eat from that tree, if you eat and listen and you consume its words, you take in what it is that it wants to tell you, which is the ideology of being your own God, doing whatever it is that you want to do, not following the will and the way or the spirit of the Most High, not eating from his tree. You understand that you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is Satan, a corrupt tree that God didn't want in the garden. So. I hope that clears some things up for you. I'll give you a little bonus too real quick. Let's look at the term serpent, right? Because the serpent, we know, is the tree. We know what the tree of life is. We know the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is. A lot of y'all knew that the serpent was representative of Satan, but you didn't necessarily know that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was as well. But it's a little bit more with the serpent that could possibly go deeper. So we're just going to give it to you as a little bonus, right? So the serpent, right, we know that he represents the poison that lives within the tree. Right? Because Satan has become a corrupt, Lucifer has become a corrupted or a poisonous tree. You understand? So, the manifestation of, uh, uh, we know that the serpent also represents a manifestation of Satan or Satan speaking through the serpent. However, it could go a little bit deeper. It's just as a bonus. Second Corinthians 11, 14 and 15, it tells us that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. And his ministers transform themselves as ministers of righteousness. Now, Angel of light, Satan transformed. Let me ask you this. When did Satan transform himself into an angel of light? Huh? I ain't just talking about came to somebody and said something positive. I mean, can you go in scripture and see where Satan literally transforms into an angel of light? It's possible because what we do know from Hebrews 1 and 7 is that the angels or the servants of God, it says that God says the spirits, he makes them as wind and his ministers as a flame of fire, right? So when we think angel of light, you got to understand, they didn't have light bulbs and stuff back then. So when they were seeing light, they used flames. They used fire to create light. You understand? So Satan transforms himself as a minister of light or as a flaming light, a flaming fire, a servant of fire. And we know from Hebrews that God has ministers of flame. He has angels who are flaming fire. Follow me. So, when you look into the word, this word serpent in Hebrew, you will come across two different words, which is nakash, and there's another word called seraph, right? And those words are kind of used interchangeably. You understand? They can be used interchangeably. And some of the definitions for those words that you'll get, and some of the translations, you'll see them translated and defined as either a fiery serpent or a fiery one, the flaming ones, a burning one, or a snake, or something of that nature, right? The thing that's funny about it is that also in the book of Isaiah, you can go, if you type in uh, seraphim and you look into Isaiah, I want to say it's Isaiah 30 or, four, or verse 46. Um, but either way, the term seraph is uh, also used to describe the seraphim. You understand? And it is, so, so if you know what seraphim are, then you kind of see where I'm going with it. Seraphim are a certain order of angelic beings. You understand who... Um, who, who were in the kingdom. Lucifer was not a seraphim, he was a cherubim, right? But is it possible, going off of certain things that the scripture is saying, that he transformed himself into one of those angels of light, which were a seraphim, in order to be able to deceive and manipulate Eve to, so that she 
would go and consume the words of his mouth. You understand what I'm saying? And so she would eat from that garden and then she would become poisoned and diseased. All right. And so I hope that that answered your question, bro. Maybe some insight, bro. Anything to you. Gave you some stuff to look into. I know it's real short. I know I sped through it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I just wanted to give you a framework, you know what I mean, to kind of open you up to some things, man. It's just, just as simple as how it is right now. You know what I mean? You're either going to eat from the tree of life, which is the most high, which is the spirit uh, of the Lord. You're either going to eat and consume his words. Remember, man don't live off of bread alone, but off of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's because you're eating from the right tree. You understand what I'm saying? But if you eat the words of the, of the enemy, then you're going to become corrupt. You're going to become poisoned. You're going to become deceived. You're going to end up thinking you can be your own God. You're going to be like, I don't believe in God. I believe in myself. I don't believe. All those people, they're eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They're consuming the words of the enemy who has become poisoned and he wants to poison the rest of God's creation. So that's your boy, man, Sam Noble. All praise to the most high, Yahuwah Elohim, by way of his only begotten son, Yahushua Hamashiach. I know it's a lot of people who probably wonder this, but you got to stop listening to uh, people. You have to start seeking the most high, studying for the word, studying the word of God. And I promise you, it's a lot of revelation out there for you to get if you truly want to receive it. But you have to allow the Bible to interpret itself and stop trying to figure it out all up in here. You know what I mean? All praise to Yahuwah by way of his only begotten son, Yahushua Hamashiach, who the world knows is Jesus Christ. It's your boy, Sam Noble.